What is up, boys? Uh, we are back here with another Market Watch. This time, we're going to be far focusing hard on the 25th anniversary, 10 of Dueling Mirrors, because I might have been wrong about this set. Now, I'm, I wasn't completely wrong, because I do feel like they included way too many... Uh, they split focus, right? You have a lot of nostalgia pandering, and you have a lot of... Um, meta cards and then you're kind of introducing a lot of things artificially to increase the set size and people aren't pulling exactly what they want but that actually kind of creates a unique uh a unique buying opportunity here if you will because if you're into selling cards or you if you want to get into selling cards this set is actually a really really good uh set to do so because you actually can't, I mean, I'm not going to say if you buy a case that you're going to be profiting and then some. That is not the case. However, a lot of the money that you will be making when you are selling, you're going to be making it after a, a year or two of the, pro, of the product's release, right? Now, I can go into some examples in a little bit, uh, but for now, let's let's just look at this page, right? You have Blue Eyes White Dragon as a QCR that's about 28 bucks. SP Little Knight, $46. Dark Magician Girl, Alt Art, $27. Triple T's, $33. Bonfire, $24. Dark Magician Girl, QCR, $15, right? Usually, I'm not going to tell you that you're going to get a case with a Blue Eyes SP, Dark Magician Girl, Triple Tax uh, Thrust, Bonfire, and a Dark Magician Girl, right? Because that would be an amazing case. But there are scenarios, I have seen videos, where you will get a, an SP Little Knight, a Bonfire, and an Obsessi, right? That's already 100 bucks, And that's really what we're trying to get at here. You get $100 off uh, off the hop here, buy the case at 165 because right now it's actually below MSRP, and try to get the $100 at least. Hold off on some of these cards for later, and then sell those cards at a higher price at a later point. Because a lot of cards, a lot of sets... They do tend to have uh, uh, like waves, right? So the first wave is usually cards that people really want at this given moment, like SP and Triple Tactics Thrust. Now, when cards get reprinted later on, which SP, Triple Tactics Thrust, Bonfire, they're still early on in their life cycle. They're bound to get reprinted. They're fan favorites. They're really good cards. They're probably not going to get overlooked. Like if Konami wants to sell another set, they're going to be reprinting those exact cards that I just mentioned, right? It just makes obvious sense. Now there's other cards in here that are probably not going to be reprinted. And uh, actually we know they're not going to get get reprinted pre pre pretty much ever again in that rarity. So uh, what am I talking about? Blue Eyes White Dragon, QCR, probably never going to be reprinted as a QCR, Unless Konami he really hates the collector, like really, really goes after the collectors. Uh, it's probably probably never going to be reprinted as a QCR anymore. It'll probably be reprinted as another higher rarity because they always do that, yes. But the QCR is safe. Uh, it's the same thing with Dark Magician Girl. And I'm also willing to bet that these alt arts, the Harpy's Feather Duster, the Regeki, the Dark Magician Girl, uh, Invoke, what was it called? Invocation. All these, all these alternate arts are probably not going to be reprinted. The tokens, so those cards are the ones you want to hold for as long as possible. And since the they are pretty rare, I mean, the Blue Eyes by Dragon, the, all these QCR, the alt arts, are usually about one per case. So my strategy for this is what, and what I kind of want you guys to think is, well, you buy a case and you're trying to aim to get $100 back in value, and you do that by selling the meta cards that are right now in the meta as quickly as possible and then hold off the cards that are more collectible for a later time and then that way over a long period of time you will actually be making a profit and, and now here here's the thing right a lot of us don't have 165 dollars even to buy a case and usually to make this kind of thing work you need actually a more than one case right so i'm not saying like this is for everyone but i will say like in a Everyone's been really negative about these tins, myself included. There is some positives in here, and that, that's the way it is, right? That is one of the positives. Now, actually, going back to the actual market watch here, we have Cash Tier Theosis. This card's being bought out, man. I mean, it was a $2, $3 card not that long ago, and it's probably going to be $10, not, not far from now. And, yeah, I haven't sold a copy of those. What I did, what I was selling, right, when I first was putting things 
when I was listing things, I sold SP Little Knight. I sold uh, Chaos Angel. It actually is going up in value. I sold my Quems. I sold my Zesties. I sold my bitches. I <laughs> my bitches, bro. Uh, I kept the right Gekis. I, I kept the Harpy's Feather Dust. I kept the cheaper secret rares. And now we're seeing a second run so soon of things uh, that are just, you know, selling at a higher price now, which is crazy, crazy, guys. Now, individual speaking, right? Like I said, there, a lot of these cards are actually really good pickups. Like, Wake Up Your Motherfucking Hero at $2, really good pickup. Tier Elements Cash Tira, $3, maybe it actually will go down a little bit more. But that this card was being bought out not that long ago. Pimp Vocation, Alternate, all the Altars, man, are super cheap and really accessible. So if you do not want to just buy a case... Which I understand. I, I, I get it. I, I would want to stay away from it if I were you guys as well. Like if I wasn't selling cards, man, I would stay away from this set 100% and buy the singles. But if you do buy singles, you got to also look at the stuff that right now is being overshadowed because people are going after the meta cards. And that's the whole point of this. Sell the meta stuff. And then in, in a couple years, maybe not even a year... You're going to be selling the, the the forgotten stuff, right? The overlooked stuff, the collector stuff. And this set is so good at this. And you know what? I have another example that I just thought of. But going off this, we have last year's tins where the QCRs are actually going up in value. We see, we're seeing Dark Mage. We first saw Exodia Head. The We got some head, boys. We got some fucking head. 60, 63 listings. Now, it used to be like 12, 20, something like that. At $18. So the price, the listings did repopulate, but the price did not go back down as much. This was a $2. This was one of the cheapest QCRs from this tin, man. And it, it, it all just, all because Konami printed the rest of the limbs in QCR form in this year's tins. Like, this is what I'm saying, right? These collector items have some weird spikes that if you just sell the meta stuff now, wait for the collector stuff to accure value to see some play, you will make. A, a decent amount of money back. I'm not saying a lot. I'm not saying you're going to get rich, but you can actually profit long term, which is awesome. And again, I'm trying to make make it be a positive spin on on a crappy set. Let's be honest, because there's short printing. It's not good for the nostalgia players because they're probably not going to get what they want. It's not going to be good for the meta players because they're not going to get what they want. But for the sellers, it's actually good because you can play both markets, and it's awesome, man. Like it's awesome, like. I understand you guys are probably like, oh, fuck this guy. He's trying to make money. But like, uh, yeah, I sell cards. Obviously, I'm trying to make money, right? I, I, like, don't gatekeep me, bro. Don't gatekeep me, bro. All right. So, yeah, start this dragon right here. There's some cards in here that haven't seen the spike uh, also, I'm pretty sure Stardust Dragon dropped in price long term because it was, yeah, it was like 10 bucks. There we go. So, anyways, moving on here to the 22 tins, and we got Dark Magician Girl Alt Arts which has been seeing a lot of buyouts and actually so right now guys it's at 14 ish dollars you know we got some yeah it's, it will say 14 starting at 13.99 and 36 listings the listings were about 60 like two weeks ago so this is what i'm saying right long term these collector pieces these these alt hearts a cure value and that's where that's where you guys are going to pounce um, on the secondary market here, Red Ice Black Dragon, $8, I think it doubled in, in like six months, man, like, holy, bro, this is, this is pretty nice, uh, but uh, other than that, I think the Blue Eyes also has been seeing the T-Rex pose, which you guys, uh, you know, I was doing a live, and you guys were, you were grilling me about, but, uh, because I like it, hey, don't, don't criticize my Blue Eyes obsession, I guess. I don't know. So Magnificent Mavis. This is the final point I will make, right? I have made so much money off Magnificent Mavens because I sold the meta stuff early. And if you guys don't recall, the meta stuff was the Shizu stuff, and it got hit on the ban list, so now it's really cheap. But at the time, it was like $8, $5, something like that per card. And I didn't even sell everything. I was actually holding off a little bit. And then they got a second wave. And I think the second wave was uh, was Sky Striker stuff. And then a third wave, which was the Sword Soul stuff. And now we're actually seeing more Sword Soul buyouts. And then there was also generic stuff like Infinite and Permanence, uh, Triple T's, Triple Tactics Talent, uh, Lightning Storm that I sold, and, and all this stuff, right? But that's meta 
that I'm talking about and how I made the bulk of my money. But now if you look at the Pharaoh Rares, which people were criticizing the hell out of, except your boy. I was the one buying some of these. Now they're like way too expensive. I ain't buying shit. But uh, if you did pull a Pharaoh Rare, which, you know, it's it was maybe one per case. And even then you were a little bit lucky there. You like they're they're valuable now. So this is this is a perfect comparison set. This is exa- proving my point that some sets you it's kind of good when they split focus because you can sell to either the meta players usually because they're the most um, usually you make the profit faster on on meta players and when the product releases because they want to buy the cardboard for the current meta and then you also later on make profit of the nostalgia players and of the collectors because you know collector collectible items just increase in value over time and this is the perfect perfect example here and i hope you guys understand that point and if you are looking for you know i don't want to say an investment opportunity but if you are trying to get into selling cards i i do think the 25th anniversary the 24 tins are actually pretty decent at getting you, you know, your feet in there where you're going to lose a little bit of money short term, but not all of it. Like if you buy a core set now, if you buy a side set especially, you're you're not going to make back half your money most of the time. Here you're guaranteed I would I don't want to say that so you guys, you know, I, I'm going to get someone that says I only got like uh crap cards, right? There are weird tins or there are weird cases, but it will be easier for you to get more than your money back by selling the meta cards and then waiting and then flipping the collectibles. That's all that's all I'm gonna say guys. The market is really interesting right now with the 2024 tins and actually the the, the most recent tins just because of the QCRs and the short printings on, on some of the Prismatic Secret Rares in the last three years. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys have a good day. Catch you guys in the next one. A big thank you to the one and only channel member, Eric. I hope I keep pulling acceptable waifus that we can bond over, man.